Use stable diffusion. Thanks for watching. This has been semi -co All right, you probably need some more explanation. Later in the video, I'll also show you how to create everything from 3D models to animations and sound effects. So make sure to watch until the Getting stable diffusion set up, I used to recommend Google Colab, but Google isn't a fan anymore. So you might be tempted to search for other AI image generators, but I still say stable diffusion is the best choice. If you have a computer with a discrete graphics card, I'd suggest just running stable diffusion locally. The installation and usage are as simple as downloading and running it. I'm not going to dive too deep into that, as I don't want to make the video too long. Once you have stable diffusion running, let me briefly explain different stable diffusion models. Big update since last time. We now have SDXL and Stable Diffusion 3. Stable Diffusion 3 is newer, but I recommend sticking with SDXL. I'll explain why later. I also personally use Comfy UI to run Stable Diffusion, and I'll include the workflow I used in the video description. Now that you got your Stable Diffusion model, let's talk about LoRas. LoRas, or Low Rank Adaptations, are smaller files that act as concepts or guidelines for your model. To put it simply, if you have a pixel art LoRa, your model will focus more on generating pixel art. Using LoRas help you get more consistent, desired results. You might be wondering about the difference between using a different model and using a LoRa. Here's an analogy. Think of your model as an experienced chef cooking a specific meal. The recipe for that meal is Laura. Even if the chef changes, they're still following the same recipe, which means they're not learning a completely new cooking style, just following the instructions. Now for the fun part. Go to civitai.com and find the model and Laura you want for your game. For this example, let's generate some pixel art. That's right, this is something I couldn't quite do in my previous AI video. For this, we'll be using SDXL 1.0 with a pixel art XL LoRa. The reason why we picked SDXL previously is because simply, there are more LoRa's available for this model. By the way, using a LoRa is as simple as placing the file in a folder and selecting it in the web interface. The results, as you can see, are surprisingly good. Similar to pixel art, you can pick any other LoRa to generate sprites exactly how you want. For 3D textures, it's pretty similar to what I explained in the old video. You don't even need a LoRa. Just type your prompt, and you'll get your texture. One thing to note is that AI doesn't always make seamless textures, no matter how much you prompt it. To solve this, use a procedural stochastic shader. You can also generate additional detail maps to enhance the texture. This is all covered in my old video and my Project Terminal devlog, so check those videos out if you're interested. For those who don't want to run Stable Diffusion locally, I recommend Tensor.art as a good alternative. And if you're looking for alternatives to Stable Diffusion models, I suggest Flux AI, which is a new AI that excels at generating images with text. Now for the big question, can it create sprite sheets? In my last video, AI failed miserably at this, and to be honest, it's still not great. But before you click away, I found a workaround that makes sprite sheets very usable. Here's how it works. First, we take a 3D humanoid model, which can be AI generated, then apply an animation, which can be AI generated, and then export the animation frame by frame, and for each frame, apply a pixelation effect using AI. When you compile all the frames into a sprite sheet, you get a decent result. You might be wondering, Semicoder, why not just use a pixelation effect in GIMP? Why use AI? Well, the AI effect just looks miles better. The good thing is, you don't need a detailed 3D model or animation, because everything will be pixelated and turned into a low frame rate sprite sheet. So generating models and animations this way is totally viable. I'll talk more about how to generate them in a later segment of the video. As for the 3D model generation, there are a few options. For environmental assets like props or environments, I recommend Sloyd.ai and Meshi. And no, I'm not sponsored by them. Both offer free tiers where you can generate and export models. I would use Sloyd AI for low poly casual games and Meshi for more detailed models with high quality textures. Rodin AI is also a good option. It's still in public beta, but so far I've had the best results with it, specifically for digital avatars. Most of the times, I got better results using image to 3D model generation rather than text to image. You might also be interested in Rodent Diffusion, a generative model for sculpting 3D avatars, but as of this recording, it's not available to the public yet. It still looks very promising though. Now, about animations. This is where things need a bit more development. The most viable option right now is to auto-rig your generated 3D character using Mixamo and then apply Mixamo animations. 
Another option is AI motion capture, which can turn regular videos into 3D animations for your character. Text to animation technology, however, still needs more work, I'd say. Sound effects. I think 11 laps is the best option here. Udio generates great ambient music, perfect for game development. Fun fact, the music in this video is all generated by Udio. Play.ht works really well, and Looped is also using voice generated by Play.ht. And that covers pretty much all the essential game assets you'll need to make a game. Before I wrap up, I just want to address that while AI can speed up your workflow, I'd like to tell you to not rely too heavily on AI. It's a tool, not a complete replacement for creativity. So the best would be to mix it with your own creativity. This has been Semicoder. I kind of know how to code.